Once upon a time, in the little town of Hamlin, in the province of Hanover, in Germany, the citizens all lived happily. And that's why you would never have heard anything about them if it weren't for this shocking story I'm going to tell you. rats in the cellars of Hamlin, just as there are everywhere else. And at that time, they were not too nasty. And the cats of the town were able to keep them in order without too much trouble. But in the spring of the year I'm talking about, people began to notice that not only were there more rats than usual, but that they were getting bigger and stronger, so that the cats were no longer masters of the situation. The citizens were not too unhappy at first because they expected things would soon sort themselves out. But instead of this, matters got worse until the townspeople didn't dare to go to bed without being guarded by an armed servant. So scared were they of waking up half-eaten by the terrible rodents. The town council discussed the matter ceaselessly. This year I won't have a single ear of corn. My wheat has been eaten down to the roots. Don't count on my stocks. They have cleared them right out. Last night I found they'd made their nests in the soup tureen. They began by drinking the soup, of course. At our house there was a complete family in my hat this morning. I didn't dare to touch it. And I came here this morning bareheaded. I shall almost certainly get a chill. Mr. Mayor... Unless you take suitable measures, the whole town will die of starvation and cold. But what do you want me to do? I'm as desperate as you are, even though I'm your mayor. Already they've eaten everything in my farmyard. My cats too, and now my dog, a great Dane, that was never afraid of anything. At this very moment, they're attacking a thatch in my house. And when they've eaten me up too, you will be without a mayor. And you will have to take suitable measures by yourselves. <laughs> So their discussions went round and round in circles. They tried everything they could think of. The rats swallowed all the poison put down for them, but it did them not the slightest harm. And they destroyed the traps with their teeth. It was rumoured that they had been attacking horses. Even little girls. All this explains why when the Pied Piper presented himself to the town council, he was immediately admitted and his words were keenly listened to. Rid you of your rats this very evening. No, oh, oh, easy to say, Mr. Mountebank, but it seems to me it will be more difficult to carry it out. Don't call me Mountebank, Your Worship. It is true I wear a pointed hat and my dress is in many colours like harlequins. Professionally, I am a flute player, and this is what can help you. Thanks to a special gift I have, I am able to charm all sorts of animals. This pink diamond is a present from the Emperor of China in gratitude for relieving his empire of a dreadful plague of toads. This golden watch, encrusted with emeralds, came from the king of Sicily for disposing of legions of lizards that infested his kingdom. Now, would you like me to take your rats in hand? Uh, how will you set about it? That is my secret. Just tell me how much you will pay me. Oh, 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 oh 50,000 crowns, if you succeed. I shall succeed. You need have no doubt about that. But 50,000 crowns, that's too much just for a little bit of fluting. My price is a thousand crowns. No more. No less. To the townsfolk of Hamlin, 
this offer was very interesting. The rats had already cost them many hundred times more. So they accepted eagerly, promising to pay the thousand crowns within 24 hours if the rats really disappeared. That evening, they prepared for bed more hopefully than they had been able to for weeks. The following day, at dawn, the Pied Piper stood in the marketplace. He put his flute to his lips, and soon hundreds, thousands, and it seemed millions of rats were leaving the houses, the sheds, the trees, the drains, to assemble all round him. There were black ones, grey ones, fawn ones, fat ones, thin ones, an absolute ocean of rats filling the marketplace. Still playing his flute, the Pied Piper set off towards the south gate of the town, and all the rats followed him silently, as in a procession. The postman looked on confused. The milk boy and several other inhabitants of the town were quite unnerved by this amazing sight. The Pied Piper went as far as the edge of the river. The rats did not stop when he did. But went on into the water. In less than an hour, they were all drowned. By midday, it became clear that not a single rat remained in Hamlin. Then the Pied Piper presented himself to the town council. I believe, gentlemen, the job has been well done. And you have no complaints? Uh, my friend, a, a truly amazing thing happened this morning. And because it happened at the same time as your visit to our town, uh, we regard you most sympathetically, believe me. Uh, indeed, we are thinking very seriously of making you uh, an honourable citizen of Hamlin. I do not wish to offend you in any way, Your Worship. But I can do nothing with either your sympathetic feelings or your honourable citizenship. All I want from you is to pay over to me the thousand crowns you promised in exchange for the service I have rendered you. Service? What service? Our rats committed suicide. Everyone saw it. Your presence meant nothing at all. And even if it did, you must admit that a little bit of fluting is not worth a thousand crowns. <laughs> come, come now. We, we won't bear you a grudge. No. Just, um... Here's a hundred crowns for your journey, and uh, have a drink with us before you go. Gentlemen, be careful. For those who mock me, I have a tune on my flute that doesn't cost anything. It will be better for you never to hear it. What's this? A ragamuffin? A musician? Who cannot even afford to get a suit of clothes all in the same material? Go to the devil, you mountebank! And may you burst while playing that uh, trumpet of yours, or whatever it is. The Pied Piper went out without saying a word. 
and the town council was very pleased with its mayor. You put him in his place properly, Your Worship. Your Worship, you were magnificent in your authority. I shall vote for you next time, Your Worship. It's a promise. The very next day at dawn, the Pied Piper was back again in the middle of the marketplace. He put his flute to his lips. And all the children of the town began to leave their homes to gather round him. All of them came. Big ones and small ones, fat and thin, blondes, brunettes, redheads, making an ocean of heads in the marketplace. Still playing his flute, the Pied Piper made his way towards the northern gate of the town. All the children followed him in a joyful procession and watched by their petrified parents. When he got to the mountainside, the Pied Piper stopped. A big rock opened up, revealing a cave in the mountainside. And into this, the children went, right to the last one. And then the mountain closed up again. Since that day, neither the children nor the Pied Piper were ever seen in the good city of Hamlin. The mayor, understandably, was dismissed. He was also driven out of the town. But this did not bring the children back. And as for the town council, it spent many hours discussing the payment of debts and the keeping of promises.